Hey there, Commanders. Recently, there have been a lot of videos criticizing Elite Dangerous over a variety of issues, but a common theme among these videos has been that the game looks visibly dated. I won't disagree with the visual aesthetics, but I strongly disagree that the graphics are a major issue. There are several other issues that this game has which have needed attention for a while, and which, if fixed, will help to revitalize the game and community. Issue number one, the grind. Game design is something nuanced, so the definition of grind tends to shift depending on who you ask and what game you ask about. I tend to define grind as any task which a player must do, which they do not enjoy, in order to get to what they do enjoy. In other words, it's not grinding if you are having fun doing it, even if the goal you are working towards takes many hours or days of effort. A large part of the problem is the way in which games measure their success. Free-to-play games measure the quality of their product in the number of hours players spend per day and per week, aggregated over a large sample size. The higher this number gets, the more successful that executives and investors view a given game. This incentive structure prompts the use of padding and long play objectives, where the goal is that all players engage with the product an average of X hours per week. Grind has emerged as a symptom of this process, resulting from the need for developers, and the investors who fund them, to drive engagement without spending a whole bunch of money on actual content. It's cheaper to slow down the progress of players through a game than it is to make a longer game with a higher pace. So developers end up making games where progression is randomly stopped because the player needs a certain power level, or some rare part in order to do the next mission. In Elite Dangerous, engineering is the principal source of this issue, and takes the form of randomly generated gameplay tokens, which players must perform specific actions in order to earn. Some tokens are easier to get than others, but as a general rule, Elite Dangerous drags out the gameplay times by making some of these materials difficult to acquire. They don't want players to progress through the system too quickly, and so it has been deliberately rigged to waste your time and in ways that are not fun to deal with. Recall that a gameplay mechanic becomes grind when it is required to get something and is not fun to engage with. It's possible to address grind by reducing the time required to earn a reward. But it's equally viable in theory to look at the task involved and then make that task more fun. Harvesting raw materials from a planet's surface is a great example of this idea. Some materials can be efficiently harvested from biological sites, but a few must be acquired by brute force over several hours of driving on a planet's surface. In this case, one easy way to attack the grind is to change the task at hand. In the case of harvesting raw materials, one solution would be to provide more options for collecting these materials, or provide a different vehicle and loadout options, that can facilitate a faster pace. Letting players deploy an automated drone, for example, that can mine for resources while the player is doing other things, but that must be retrieved and maintained by regular visits, or could be lost, stolen, and destroyed if the player fails to return. I can do a more detailed ideal feature video on this topic if there's interest, but this principle can be applied across multiple areas of the game and should be where possible. Issue number two, the balance. It's well known among veteran players in the community that Elite Dangerous has been poorly balanced since the engineering update was first released. These problems have never been properly addressed, and continue to plague open instances, resulting in a markedly less fun experience for everyone. I don't only refer to PvP balancing, which remains atrocious, but also to the balancing and weight of things like piracy, shipping and trade, as well as rescue and exploration. 
Anyone who has ever tried to repair a large ship hull knows how long that it takes, and likewise knows that in most situations, a 20-minute flight back to the nearest station is a far more effective use of your time. Limpets are poorly exploited, as are the AFMUs and ship launch fighters, in large part because these balancing issues have remained unaddressed. In exploration, the decision to give every ship a discovery scanner, in my opinion, was a mistake, because it made exploration too easy, reducing specialization of roles and simplifying a mechanic that depends heavily on planning and forethought. Exploration is, and always has been, the perfect place to integrate long-term survival mechanics into Elite Dangerous. You can watch the paint slowly strip away from a worn hull, and see the structural integrity of your ship decline over time, but these factors do not bear any meaningful consequence on exploration gameplay. The game hands us an automatic field maintenance unit in a game world where equipment does not need maintenance. Unless damaged by an external force or the pilot's incompetence, your internal modules will never wear out from normal use. Something as simple as a passive wear mechanic that takes place over several hours, or even days of gameplay, where a player must occasionally use their AFMU to maintain internal systems, would be an inexpensive and yet very engaging mechanic that would add consequence and consideration to longer trips. Likewise, shifting the damage model in-game from a time-to-kill based system to one based on time to disable, would greatly impact the formatting of ship builds, as well as improve everything from combat, to piracy, to exploration, to trade. Ramping up the incidental module damage that ships can take without being sub-targeted is yet another basic change that would not require the creation of any new assets. Improving the balance of the game is more about aligning the consequences which the game imparts with what would normally be expected in the real world. This also includes aligning the economic forces, which are especially nonsensical for engineering materials. Issue number three, cooperative play. Elite Dangerous has long needed more incentives for players to group up. This is something that solo play mode directly grates against. Conceptually, Including solo mode in the first place solved two problems. First, it satisfied a promise made during the Kickstarter that there was going to be a single-player version of the game, though this version was implied to be an offline campaign in the spirit of Elite's predecessors. Second, after a few significant station blockades early in the game, solo play mode provided a means for players to escape lopsided or abusive situations created by other players. Cutting off solo play mode outright would be a bad idea. The game in its current form is far too imbalanced to enable an enjoyable experience. Fact is, most of the player base would outright lose access to places like Shinrar to Desra, as well as many of the popular engineers. Elite Dangerous has lacked the kinds of intrinsic conflict mediation tools that it needs in order to control aberrant or abusive behavior. Cooperative play or the incentive for it, would help to greatly reduce these issues, but unless you have some very good friends, it can be difficult to get help where and when you need it. Encapsulating these dynamics into a player mission generator, or similar feature, where players can post contracts for services from other players, would go a very long way towards controlling abusive behavior, and would make a game out of reaching higher risk areas. Making the engineers themselves a party in this gameplay would also be helpful. In the event a commander kills a bunch of other commanders in and around an engineering base, said engineer could generate a bounty mission at stations around the system, become automatically hostile to said criminal commander, and potentially revoke access to high-level engineering blueprints by any commander who infringes upon their operation. Players could post a request for multi-crew support, or could request physical escort, in addition to repair or refuel services, and then rate each other based on performance. Players requesting an escort could, for example, 
see the wanted status and notoriety of the commanders who offer to fulfill a contract, along with related faction reputations and superpower status. Improvements to the dynamics behind group travel, such as better jump coordination in teams, streamlined refuel and repair processes, the ability to restock ammunition between ships, and the ability to directly dock ships together to exchange cargo and personnel. These are all things that can greatly improve the group play dynamics of Elite Dangerous dramatically, and would help revitalize the otherwise lonely environment in which this game has languished for years. Issue number four, quality of life. The small details matter in games where players are expected to spend thousands of hours. Life is short, and these little issues, like coarse grit sandpaper, can eventually wear down any material. The list of fixes that could fit in this category are massive, but supposedly simple things like bookmark folders, customized route plotting, fleet carrier jump schedules, not kicking players out of the carrier map every time a jump fails, these are changes that help reduce all the ineffectual clicking about that players must overcome when traveling, a task which is integral to playing the game and which often shows the least regard for a player's time and energy. The issues I've detailed above are doing far more damage to Elite Dangerous than graphical fidelity, and are going to have a far more significant effect on the player experience than the tighter textures and effects that will almost certainly require a new engine and ground-up reconstruction of the underlying code. There are plenty of games in the world that have attracted far more players on far less advanced rendering engines. Fortnite, Minecraft, or more recently, Warhammer 40k Bolt Gun are all very popular titles that offer less realistic graphics and yet maintain far more engagement, not because they are prettier, but because their game design is better. People still drive around old cars when they are well cared for, and occasionally upgraded. There's no need to throw out something that fundamentally works because the dashboard is cracking and the seats smell funny. It's far cheaper to fix those issues than it is to buy a new car. The same can be true of video games. Elite Dangerous does not need a new engine to be successful. It needs upholstery a tune, and some upgraded parts. This game does not need, and should not try to emulate, Star Citizen. It already has an identity, and should work to refine, or improve, that which has already been validated through years of development. That's all I have for today, so I'll catch you all later.